I previously made a worm robot which used peristaltic locomotion, expanding and contracting various segments of its body to push itself along. I'd intended to come back to this project and add some ratchet wheels on each segment, just like the hairs that can be found on real earthworms which would help prevent slippage. I'd also intended to add more actuators so that the worm could bend side to side to steer, and also bend up and down so it could climb over objects. I've also previously experimented with various wheel alternatives to see how robots can climb over objects. This included a hybrid leg wheel robot and my ped rail wheels which had 14 extending legs around the circumference of the wheel which run on a rotating guide in the wheel hub. So I've decided for now to build a new robot which has actively driven wheels and can also bend in two axes between each segment. This robot will be made from several identical modules that are linked together, each one with a driven set of wheels and some servos to make it flex. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. I've used these types of motors before and Tross and Robotics sent me a bunch of them, these are 6 volt gearhead motors with encoders, but I'm probably not going to use the encoder in this project, we'll just use them as 6 volt geared motors. Each one has a 3D printed bevel gear on it and that's attached with a captive nut and a grub screw onto the flat on the shaft of each of the outputs from the gearhead. I've got a corresponding bevel gear to turn that drive round by 90 degrees, and I've just glued some M8 studding in there so that we can attach a wheel to each end. And that fits in between two 8mm internal diameter bearings that are mounted on the rest of the chassis, and there's one of those in each side, so that runs really freely. So that's our complete drive, and of course that studding is glued in so it doesn't slip. I've made four units like that, each one has two wheels, and each wheel has a TPU tyre. So that mechanism seems to run pretty well, you can see those bevel gears going round quite freely there. To get two axes of flexibility I'm using two servos, and these are both clamped on with some brackets they're provided with onto the back of each of the units. So we can see those are mounted there, we've got the servo horns at the top, and that's going to operate some levers which is going to push and pull each section to make it bend. So I made these bendy universal joint things, there's one on the back of each unit and the corresponding joint on the front of each of the units, and four of these units are going to be linked together. Each servo has a servo horn on it which I've 3D printed on also a long lever that goes onto the next section, and that allows me to bend in two axes depending on how I move those servos, so I can bend side to side by lengthening one and shortening the other, or I can bend up and down by lengthening and shortening both of them at the same time. And that means I can also mix all of that together, so I can bend down and to the left or up and to the right as I wish to do so. And if we link all four units together we get quite a bit of bend there, just like a bendy snake. And of course we can bend in the other axis as well, and that seems to work pretty well, so we should be able to lift up the back and front to drive over various objects and flex left and right for steering. And I also unexpectedly created a new mode of being able to translate directly sideways by kind of walking, and that's just from using both of those axes at the same time, which works pretty well. The whole thing is controlled by an Arduino Mega, and I've got an NRF 24L01 radio device just hanging off the side there, eventually I'll tidy up the wires, and everything's powered by 7.4V LiPos. I'm just using the OpenDog 2 remote to drive this at the moment, and walking basically involves just moving those axes manually to kind of flex, which is actually quite empowering to feel that you can drive it and control it manually without any preset motions. I've added an IBT4 motor driver which allows me to drive all of the wheels backwards and forwards so that we can drive, and if I bend the robot we can drive and steer. But before we continue with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is Altium Designer. Altium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. It allows engineers to connect effortlessly with every part of the electronics design process. 
Our team designer brings 35 years of innovation and development and is focused on a truly unified design environment which makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With our team designer you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Our team designer allows you to share the real-time state of projects on the web so that web team members, manufacturers and even customers can review and mark up your designs without ever leaving your design space. Our team designer integrates with mechanical design software and allows bi-directional communication between your ECAD and MCAD tools, which makes collaboration with other parts of the product design team easy. Native integration with Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks and PTC Creo is up to 10 times faster than your typical error-prone data exchange methods. As a result of the Altium 365 Cloud, which comes included in your subscription plan, teamwork and collaboration are easy with nothing additional to install or configure. So check out the link in the description to this video to start your free trial of Altium Designer today. So, it seems a bit more like a train robot than a snake, but I'm pretty happy with the manoeuvrability. At least I can make fairly tight turns at the moment and drive all around. And of course I can drive backwards and forwards, so that allows me to do three point turns and do whatever I want to position the robot wherever I need it. And that sideways translation mode is going to be pretty handy to get out of tight spots where I can't drive backwards and forwards enough to steer and make a three point or multi point turn. So I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out as well. One of the main reasons to have it bend up and down was so that it could drive over objects. So let's see how that goes. Well, that seemed pretty easy, although it's only a very low block that I'm driving over here and I can't bend the robot anymore. But nonetheless, the plan seems to have pretty much worked and we can climb over that fairly successfully without getting grounded. But of course, when I bend the robot, the back and front picks up. It would be far better if we could pick up the front two segments and get much more clearance on that front wheel. But to do so, we'd either need a much longer robot or we'd actually need a big mass in the back. So I've decided to upgrade those servo horns to much longer levers so I can steer much more tightly. And I can also bend the robot up and down much more tightly as well. So we get much more ground clearance on those front and back wheels for going over objects. Initially it seems like it's going to be much easier, now I can bend that front wheel right up, but of course now I can bend down the other way as well, which actually grounds all of the wheels on the front and back of the robot. So I have to be a bit more precise about how I drive it, which takes me a little bit longer to get over the object. But nonetheless it's actually got much more ground clearance, so I think we're going to be much better with this for climbing over much bigger obstacles. I've installed a wedge right on the front of the robot instead of the linkage that doesn't go anywhere and on the back I've made a cover to just cover the Arduino so I don't scrape the electronics on the ground if it gets grounded. Well it's definitely more manoeuvrable and it steers a lot tighter but how well will it climb over obstacles?
that works pretty well on the whole. If I kind of bend backwards and forwards a lot, I can pretty much get over any obstacle. And I also seem to be able to get over quite large gaps, which is quite good. If I go really fast, put the top up, I can generally get over a gap that's almost as long as the robot, probably at least two or three sections anyway. And then um, that seems to work pretty well. What I'd really like to do is make a bigger one of these that I can ride on that's a bit like a quad bike where you sit on the middle two sections and the whole thing snakes to steer and also bends up just like this one to go over some obstacles and kind of mould to the terrain. That would be quite good. I think we probably have to do something slightly different with the steering rather than just bending the whole thing. We probably have to steer in segments one at a time as they approach the same point, a bit like a train going around a track so we don't get too much friction on the wheels. Probably could do a differential on each stage as well if it's that big, but otherwise I think that worked pretty well. So I'm going to publish a Canon code for this if you'd like to build one or have a look at how I did the code and the joystick mixing. The remote is from OpenDog3 and all that stuff's on GitHub already. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright, that's all for now.